within Europe. So this is a H2020 project, uh, convenience and protection, and uh, also uh, with a program uh, with CONACY uh, for the Mexican part. This is a project with two years uh, duration starting uh, 1st September 2016. So the consortium, uh, well, this is um, the European part in Europa, um, Telefonica, uh, Research and Innovation, uh, now it's the FDK, not the FDK. You have to update the presentation. And my third consultant, of course. And concerning the Mexican side, we have Infotech, we have their representatives, of course. Uh, for the Infotech. Uh, and of course, the coordinator of the project and concerning the Mexican part, who is here. Thank you. Uh, we have Cudi, of course, uh, who is the main organizer of this event, of course, and the North Well, um, what we have is uh, well, the main goal of Firework is not only to concern the industry, but it's a practical example of the cross industry collaboration because this is um, an import of this platform, not only. Uh, for the, the use of technology, but, but also for enhancing the pillars of the transversals, or, or verticals, I'm sorry, uh, concerning uh, applications, for example, uh, concerning smart cities we have uh, this morning uh, uh, all around with the uh, open power camp. Smart cities, health, we have also uh, uh, energy and uh, security. So what we have uh, all around uh, the, the project is to enhance success stories uh, in Europe, justify, of course, the way in which these success stories could be uh, uh, applied here in the Mexican context, but also to find the, the challenge that could also be applied in Europe, because uh, we have some, some specificities concerning uh, the culture, the, the cities, the transportation, and this can also open some other opportunities uh, in Europe. So, what we search is to accelerate this market uptake of fiber technologies in Mexico. Why? Not only because of the technology, but also, as, uh, as I had already said, uh, for the applications. So, way what we research in first time is to allow developers, integrators, contributors, and end users to benefit from this uh, ecosystem uh, uh, here in Mexico, of course. What is the main uh, reason is that uh, users uh, will be able to price the fiber as a standard. The, 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 the objective is not a standard as an, an ISO, but uh, at least as a, as, a, as, a, as a set of good practices to, to set the, the context information and management, for example, on IoT platform for services in the in cities, for example, um, for learning experimental activities on the firewall lab for developers, for example, at the Infotech site in Aguascalientes. 
But also what we want is to stimulate this cooperation among these channels, as you mentioned, from uh, all around the, the fiber, uh, but in a general uh, manner in, in ICT technologies. So we have this set of objectives, uh, just to enhance, of course, collaboration between Mexico and fiber. Of course, fiber is the first pillar we have uh, just to, to start this uh, uh, dynamic between between uh, both regions, but also in the general part the ICT uh, as, a, as a whole. So the first objective is to design and implement a complete training for fiber technology. We have already uh, set our first uh, action concerning the train for trainers. Uh, here uh, at the Kundi uh, meeting, we have a session for tra uh, for training some uh, developers and also a uh, hackathon, <coughs> which is still on, on the way. Uh, tomorrow we will have the, the, the session for, for revelations. The second is to establish different working groups. This is the main reason uh, you are here in, in, this, in, this, in this session. And uh, to support the tech fiber technologies by engaging the industry and other stakeholders, of course, like end users. This is, I think, the most important part. But also um, research in academia and also, of course, the, the, the industry itself, the uh, industry working group itself. Uh, to support the strategy, this is a very important uh, point because uh, to support the, stru uh, the strategy between Europe and Mexico cooperation on our own fiber concerns also in, in the cooperation uh, uh, between programs for supporting, for granting, and of course to enhance this cooperation. The first uh, step is, of course, to, to, to have uh, the, the, the grants on the policy part concerning H3D training, training uh, projects, but also to have uh, the, the, the similar um, a mechanism or funding to, to, to embrace accelerator program, for example, incubation and accelerator program, but all our fiber, not only the main uh, acceleration or incubation program we have in Mexico. So this is a very important uh, part because uh, what we want is also not only to, to have the fiber, but also some other ICT related uh, uh, domains, of course. The fourth one is to define and foster fiber driving synergies to facilitate networking among relevant stakeholders. One of the, uh, of the uh, objectives of the working groups is, of course, to embrace the collaboration among these uh, two groups, for example, for end users, not only to, to, to to work on the challenges we, uh, we, we are facing here in Mexico, but also to find the synergies in order to uh, have this collaboration, but also uh, to find the, the, the key elements to, to, to embrace synergy among the other groups, for example, industry, government, and so on. And finally, to increase the visibility of the project outcomes, because we, uh, one of the, <coughs> these outcomes will be the input papers with recommendations, mainly recommendations, and also an action plan. Uh, in order to, to, to start this uh, uh, this uh, this team, not only to do the recommendation, but also the first steps uh, towards towards, for example, uh, the uh, the, uh, the structure of the, of the grants, for example, from the Mexican part, but also for the European one. Okay, this is the main. These are the main the, the main objectives. What we want is to, to strengthen, of course, the part of the technology. The business challenge, but also the community. For us, the community would be the main part. This is why also this is one of the reasons we have the working groups. The working groups are pillar uh, among uh, the, the community we will work around in order to push or to have some uh, to have um, traction on these initiatives. For example, here in Tuli, we have uh, several communities, and what we want is to of course, to, to embrace, for example, the research and education group, to embrace uh, two main uh, research groups, and to have some uh, some some uh, some particular initiatives. Just as a, just as a, as a first step, just for example, as an example. So, finally, what we have in the working groups, uh, the working groups are um, composed uh, by well-recognized experts. Represented and connecting a broad network of innovator, innovators and business. Um, you will have uh, particular meetings concerning each group, 
In this room, what we have is the user's room, and the, the other room, uh, we will have the research and education and industry group all together, because uh, this group is, um, is, is leading the initiative for the input papers and the other, and the other initiatives, of course. But what we want is also that these groups will focus on areas of the power drive innovation. For example, uh, in this way, as a tackle societal, societal uh, challenges here in Mexico, in this way, we, we decided with some, some other studies among the collaboration between uh, 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 Europe and Mexico, transport security, health, and energy. So the idea is that these working groups will work uh, uh, in, a, in a continuous, of course, um, activities, but in a basis of three monthly um, and virtual or face-to-face -face meetings. In this, in this case, it will be the first face-to-face -face meeting. Okay. So, uh, these are the main objectives of the industry working group. It will be uh, on my charge. Uh, and we have three main objectives. The, main, the first one is to identify and discuss best, best practices on final accelerator models for the Mexican case. So in this case, what we want is to, to have a benchmark of this accelerator um, uh, incubator and accelerator uh, initiatives in, in Europe and to evaluate our own initiative here in Mexico. And of course, we have this benchmark of accelerators in, 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 in Europe and the production of input paper with these best practices and also recommendations for the, in general for the industry, but also for government in order to, to have this, this kind of, of, of uh, funding mechanism. <clears throat> For the research and education working group, that is in charge of Salma Khalife, Salma Khalife from Kuli, uh, who will not uh, attend the event because of uh, a familiar situation. <laughs> we are with, with, with her. But um, what is important in this is that we have these five uh, uh, objectives. The first one is to identify um, the research and community needs to develop innovative powers applications. These uh, research and education communities, all, all around the research and communities, um, uh, existing, already existing here at Cooley. And what we want is to promote the application of these software and hardware engineers among these research communities, but um, applying it to the, to the fiber base, of course. But also, uh, among these needs, we can select uh, a set uh, of communities having these challenges in order to, to, to promote the use of fiber. And of course, there are some needs uh, to use the fiber um, a platform, as a, let's say, uh, in an easier manner than older. That's why we will uh, prioritize this. Um, the fourth one is to foster disciplinary, uh, disciplinary collaboration between the trained engineers, um, um, but also the technical groups of these communities. So what we want is, of course, to, to, to have some kind of selected um, uh, products. For example, for the hackathon, we want to, to, to discover some of the, of the applications that could serve to the researcher communities, and to foster, uh, and also in, as, a, as a little grant to, to or, or, or seed grants to enhance these, these, these projects. And finally, to produce an, an, an input paper with these best practices and we, uh, recommendations in order to engage research and education communities with the fiber, of course. And finally, this is the reason uh, Oscar is leading uh, the users, is to, of course, to tackle, maybe you can explain the, in a better way than me. Okay, so you're doing great. <laughs> anyway, so, so the objectives of this uh, users working group is to um, make sense out of the of the uh, potential of fiber in Mexico. So what we want to do here is to involve the people that can actually uh, give an impact uh, using fiber um, you know, to the society. Uh, so what we intend by users is, is kind of two sides here. On one side, we intend to involve policymakers, as the fiber community has been pushing from the very beginning. So, involving the different municipalities, the different decision makers at local, national, regional level, uh, to create so solutions that are really making sense of what is needed in the specific place. In the other side, we also are involving, uh, we want to at least to put on the table 
the, uh, the app is related to the actual final user, for me and the citizens. Uh, it's something that probably in the fiber community has been discussed, but uh, I think still it's too much very technology pushed the, the whole fiber story. So here what we want to do is to add, at least in the Mexican perspective, what would be the, the, the main um, successful or success factors for actually adopting the technologies from the users when we use of policymakers and final users intended as, as the citizens that will be applying the technologies. Then how we want to go to this? Well, it's very similar to the other uh, experts groups. What we want to do is to, to set up a, a group of experts that represent these kind of users we are in for, uh, at least the, the potential ideas that these users may, may, may be, uh, say, uh, put into consideration, and then uh, produce in the, same, as, in the same way as in the other working groups, and some guidelines, some directives through a white paper that we will share with the other working groups to put a final, a final uh, more visionary uh, joint document by the end of the project. So this is more or less what we want. I don't know if there is other slides. Then if, if it's fine for you, we can go directly to the, to the meeting of the user working group. Of course, you are all invited to, to, to be part of this. And what, I, what I will do now is to present a little bit more in detail what the group is about, who are the people involved. Of course, if someone is interested to get involved in this group, it's very welcome. Yeah. Please let me know. And, but also we're going to involve uh, other people here from the other working groups to present a little bit of their ideas, right? Okay, so excuse me for a second. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we had a preliminary agenda. We we'll change it a little bit because of the setting of the meeting. Uh, uh, now we are extending the meeting to, to be together with the other working groups. So I will probably. Uh, skip this round table presentation because if we do a round table presentation now probably will take all the time uh, for, for this meeting. But I will at least introduce very briefly the different members of this working group. So as, as I mentioned, we try to involve people representing users at large. Uh, and this is the people that are already part of the group, people that are already being contributing in preliminary discussions that we started a few months ago. So we have uh, Franz Ignacio Spekeli that uh, is working, or was working until very recently in the government of Leon Guanajuato. I don't know if he's already here, but otherwise he will be probably be joining later. Uh, we have uh, Richard Stevens that I think is around. Yeah, I'm sorry about that picture. I don't know why he got that. <laughs> this morning he might be here in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, but I think very nice picture, especially if we talk about users, so I'm happy to have the picture that you provide. Okay, thanks Richard. Uh, then we have Rafael Perez, uh, he's yeah. sitting here in the room. Uh, of course we will, uh, next we will give the, the, the word to each of you just to say a few words about your idea on this user's working group. Uh, Adriana Navardini is joining later, she sent a an email this morning that she was taking her flight, so she will be arriving, she told me, around 9.30 or 10 to, to the meeting, so she's she's in the way to, to arrive. Uh, Maria Lima Koivanen, uh, she's uh, in VTT in Finland. She's not going to make it for this meeting, but she's providing a lot of input to the group already. Victor Gonzalez, some of you know Victor, uh, uh, he's not here tomorrow, he's starting a course, so he couldn't make it, unfortunately. But the other members are here, so we have Giuseppe Kutri, is sitting here. He's less a user, more a technologist, but we hope he will guide us in the users working group to, to see everything that all the, the dreams that we might have in our mind to tell if they are feasible or not. <laughs> using fiber technology to kind of someone that, that pulls us down to the earth and say what is being done, what is something that could be done in the short term, what could be done in the longer term, and so on. Uh, and, and we have Christian Leorin also here. He'll be representing more the, the users, as I mentioned before, more than as the final users for the people that are actually the citizens that are actually 
being used in the technology, but it's important to take care about them. Okay, uh, now I will, I will show a very short video of uh, produced not by us, I can tell immediately that it's not our job and our work here, but it's about uh, produced by the Open and Natural Initiative on Smart Cities. And why I mentioned this, and uh, this is a very interesting initiative that is being run also parallel together with, with Fiverr at large. And uh, it's an organization that is putting together different cities in the world, in Europe most mainly, but also in other regions. Um, so for example, Mexico is already, some cities in Mexico are already part of this network. And they are sharing best practices, ideas, and uh, other relevant um, uh, findings about, about adoption of these technologies in worldwide, basically. So the, the video that I will show is very, very short. As I mentioned, it's uh, been taken in an event organized by, by the network. And uh, you want like, why should I explain it? It's better to show, to see. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just making the life easier to everyone. That's it. We see a smart city as a, a, a place, a, an ecosystem in which we can develop sustainable solutions, citizen-centered, and uh, very important is that those applications are unified. Una Smart City como tal lo que provee son un conjunto de herramientas y de dispositivos tecnológicos que alimentan, generan datos de la ciudad y permiten mejorar el día a día de los ciudadanos en base a todos esos datos generados. It was surprising how uh, beekeepers uh, are demanding about technology and about new solutions because the traditional image of the beekeepers is someone who is who has an ancestral and rural job and we're not really open to new technology. But in fact, it was the contrary. When And they're, they're, they are involved since the beginning of the project. Uh, we follow a kind of open innovation process to develop our solution. So they are very involved even in the in the design of the of the hardware, how to put it in the BIs. They, they, they really decide how to make this. Daily work was me and my colleague, because we are two founders, grabbing the laptop, going to the co-working, <laughs> right a bit, and then sometimes ask for advice to the people around, but not just mentors, but even all the other startups present in the co-working. We have a system of comments that allows the gestors of the government to interact directly with the citizens, so that the information is interchanged in a direct way and is passed from old models in which you had to fill out long forms of paper, to deliver them, and to lose them at the end in a bureaucratic process that the citizen didn't have the sensation of knowing if it worked or not, in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on in a model of transparency in which you can see how the progress is going on
okay, we want to use your solution, we want to test our solutions, we want to use startups' solutions for sensors, for all other data, for tourism, uh, every, a lot of uh, verticals that you can have in smart cities. But please try to integrate with our platform, that's Fireware platform, where you can have all the opportunities to work with several other uh, entities. Soy Fernando Moro y pertenezco al proyecto Mejora tu ciudad. My name is Vincent. I'm the co-founder of Host2B. Rui Costa and I'm the CEO of Fubiware. Hi, I'm Serena and uh, my project is Bad Sharing. So, uh, as you see, what is the kind of intention that we have here? Probably the video to explain it much better than I tried to do at the beginning. So, what we have here is uh, the possibility of creating, so the technology providing the possibility of creating a series of new applications for the citizens in different fields. Smart cities ranging from smart health, transportation, government, whatever. So there are companies doing this uh, in an initial, in an isolated way. There are governments that need applications for the whole purposes in some areas, uh, and the idea is to make these things match together. So giving them the right infrastructure, the, the companies that are working traditionally have worked in isolated way can share. Uh, the data they are producing and taking data also from other applications potentially to create more and more interesting services that make actual sense for the different uh, municipalities, governments, and so on. Okay, so putting an infrastructure that allows to do this in a more smooth way is this for me get. In the in this look we want to involve the final users because it's not only about policy telling what is relevant for the citizens, but really putting the citizens in the hands of uh, collaborating in the design of the technology in the way that they get familiar and the adoption is smoother and easier. So this is more or less the, the, the few words that the whole idea behind it. So in this project, what we want to do is to try to put in the table the different people representing uh, industry, users, experts, uh, uh, citizens, education, community, training, and so on, to simplify, to give uh, one step forward possibility of, of doing this uh, a reality for Mexican countries. Okay. So coming back to the you know, members that are in the, in the user working groups so that I told before, is I would like to hear a little bit from them, just maybe a, 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 an initial idea of what they have in their mind uh, that could be put on the table for later development in the, in the meetings of the user working group about uh, what their own vision on how we can move it on forward this, uh, this idea of giving uh, smart cities uh, technologies to citizens. Okay? So I, I will start maybe uh, with, with uh, Richard that, that has this very nice picture here. <laughs> maybe you can do a quick uh, introduction about yourself and then maybe talk about the leading ideas. Okay, thank you, Oscar. I'm Richard Stevens. I'm research director at IDC. Some of you probably know IDC. We're a market a research uh, organization that's worldwide. Um, uh, I was on the expert group that started um, the Future Internet PPP with the European Commission, and I was the um, expert that followed the, um, the Fiber project and the support action Concord at, at the beginning. So I've seen Fiber since its very beginning. Um, in the last couple of years, I ran a, a study on FIWARE. Now, now you know that the um, FIPPP is uh, several hundred million euros of European investment, and they are obliged to do an impact analysis of every uh, investment that they make. So uh, in particular, I was looking at the third phase, or the accelerator program, when uh, FIWARE was pretty much uh, already developed and, and on the table, and they wanted to bring it out to um, to cities, to small and medium enterprises, to startups, uh, to internationalization like um, Mexico. So uh, the the third phase um, funded five uh, accelerator projects, which in turn funded uh, about a thousand startups. And um, I think one thing that would be really interesting to do and come out of this work 
is to focus on you know, what kind of impact you know, these startups have, have had. Because if you have an example uh, of something that works, then maybe you're more willing to try it and you have some better idea about how you can use the results of something like Fiverr. So we can maybe um, we can look at some of the uh, some of these guys like Hostv or, or Ubiware or and and see how they did it and see what kind of impact they, they had. So that would be what what I would say. Of course, it's very open to discussion at any moment. If you, you, know, if you want to interrupt our experts in the group, if you have any question uh, while well, well, uh, people are, are, are speaking. So uh, I have a question now for you. <laughs> okay. you. You mentioned this uh, potential, uh, potentially looking back into what's been going on in Europe and looking about the impact. When you mentioned impact, what do you refer exactly to? Yeah. Can you mentioned, uh, so do you think of the impact of creating more companies and providing services or the impact to the citizen in which way? So could you elaborate a little more on this impact that you think you can make? Sure. I mean, you can you can cut things up however you want. You can talk about the advantages of, of anything. Um, but in the end, I know this sounds very productive, but people want to make money. Especially if you're a small company, you want to survive. Um, you don't want to die. A lot of SMEs and startups, and uh, they actually don't last more than three years. So um, the first thing we need to think about when we talk about impact is whether or not it's having some economic impact. And that, that's, of course, different for any kind of user. So uh, small and medium enterprises uh, interesting, interested in living, making enough money to, to keep doing something. A company like mine, a multinational big company, is interested just in the bottom line how much money they make. A city is interested in saving money, for example, which is the same thing as making money. So if, if we can demonstrate that you're saving money, you're actually having a positive economic impact in your, in your business. So I think if, when we talk about impact, it, now we look, personally, we looked at a lot of stuff like innovation, you know, impact on innovation, how, um, how radically FM, FI, uh, I'm sorry, Fireware was changing the, the business models and the technology models that were out. We looked at things like um, business plans. We looked at the social innovation or the social impact. Um, but um, I don't know a, a nice way to say it, but that's all kind of old. It's, it comes down to really whether or not it, it's sustainable. And any technology investment you make has to be able to change the bottom line or affect the bottom line. So even though we did study, and I can show you a lot of data, I have data on a thousand startups that, I'm sorry, a thousand receivers of Fiware um, funds. In, all of it was kind of indifferent because if I look back at that now two years later, what I'm really interested in is, is, is Ubiware still alive? Are they still making business? Are they growing? Um, so, yeah, I think that's what impact is about. So I think this will be a very interesting topic to discuss later on with the, with the group. Thank you. Okay, so going to the same line, uh, I skipped France because he was not here. I think he hasn't arrived, right? So maybe we can move to, to Rafael. Rafael, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Rafael. I'm currently an independent consultant working uh, with a number of organizations. Mainly uh, the organization I'm representing here is Fundación Metropolis from Madrid. Uh, Fundación Metropolis is uh, a uh, research and think tank uh, of cities, uh, mostly coming from the territorial development and urban development uh, cities and, and territories. And um, uh, I'm doing a lot of work with them, mostly within the, the intersection between urban development, city transformation, and technology. Uh, I'm also doing a lot of activities with the development banks, uh, Asian development banks, Inter-American <coughs> development banks. And right now, I'm working mostly on digital transformation in the Inter-American development bank, new initiative for Latin America. 
which was a digital transformation initiative. So those are the things I'm doing uh, currently. Uh, prior to this uh, phase, uh, I spent almost 20 years working for Microsoft, a uh, big company. Uh, I started doing government and education for Latin America. So I was almost 20 years ago the person that established the organization for Microsoft in Latin America and the Caribbean to engage and work with government and education segments. What a very, very interesting uh, period of time. Uh, after a few years organizing the, the same strategy on how to engage with government, I created Microsoft, a new organization that deals with development organizations. So I spent almost 10 years living in Washington, D.C., uh, engaging Microsoft with World Bank, the American Development Bank, the American Bank, UN, and all this ecosystem of international organizations. And after that, I took a global role to replicate in Microsoft the model I developed for Latin America. The model was replicated worldwide. I was a, a worldwide director for that team that deals with international organizations. We move to South Africa, across Asia, there's all the different directors. It was really, really great experience. Why? What I can, I can bring I left Microsoft two years and a half ago, part of the big organization of, of the company. And uh, during this period, so I've been working mostly in smart cities, work uh, across the world and uh, data transformation, the things that I mentioned to you. I think I can, I can bring to this work group uh, experience on, on business models, like uh, Stephen was mentioning, uh, <laughs> the bottom line and sustainability. The business model, how to really drive impact uh, in people's lives, just like we do with technology and projects, and everything we do, try to develop impact, try to uh, um, impact the life of people, but really it requires to it really requires sustainable models in order for companies to continue doing things, universities to continue doing research, and governments to continue with the modernization process and uh, outreach and, and deliver those services to the citizens. Because at the end, that's the only way to deliver. Why cities? Cities are really critical. Today, you know, the world uh, is a world of cities. Uh, we are talking about around 50% of the population are growing. Uh, that's living in cities, and all the services that a government delivered to the citizens and to the businesses landed in the city. So the national governments deal with the national agenda, but at the end, people live in cities. And in the cities is where the services to deliver and where the services really, really uh, reach, reach each the different individuals. Uh, so my value proposition, I hope, will be helping you to analyzing and to think about business models that help to generate sustainability around the private work. Uh, second, uh, my experience working on public-private partnership. A lot of the work I did uh, in the past has been about partnering universities with government and uh, private sector and NGOs, uh, international organizations. Uh, and uh, I will check about it. Uh, uh, third piece is the work uh, before Microsoft, I was in university, so I was a researcher also. So writing this is one of the things we're going to do. So I think we're going to have a good time really writing and, and producing the research documents that will be useful uh, for, for this community. Thank you very much, James. Starting to, to say better the, the group, and now I think um, in the emails that we were exchanging before, I think it's much better to do space to space because it's much easier to, to get the maximum of the different participants. And next in the list, and I saw that she arrived already, so we have Adriana, Adriana Lavardini. Uh, you would like to present something or you want to, to talk, whatever you prefer? Sure. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about the future of Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to work this wonderful opportunity to work together on what we can show become an efficient, inclusive, and smart city. And my name is Adriana Rabini. I am a commissioner at IFC, which is the telecommunications regulator and the competition authority in Mexico. It's a federal institution. And uh, thank you so much. To say, I, before working at IFT, I worked for many years as a consumer advocate 
of founding a consumer rights organization where we learned a lot about, about users, about empowerment, about the, the asymmetries that users and consumers face these are these um, providers of, of goods and services. And, um, and so I just in a general note, I think um, we have to address both supply side issues and demand side issues in, in a project of this, uh, of this uh, dimension. And so I assume well, this is the, the demand side group, the, the users group. Uh, and there's, I would say, too, too many things we have to not only think of, but somehow implement when it comes to, to the digital economy and digital cities. And it's basically trust and education. And they are absent. We cannot make any progress in the digital economy with these smart solutions. And, uh, and in order to gain trust in the use of, of uh, machine to machine and internet of things and connecting cities, we both need to be more um, digitally educated as, as users, to be more savvy as how our, our personal data is better kept, as how we use networks, how do we store data, for, what to trust, what not to trust. Uh, but, and also, well, well, we need to make sure that there's an ecosystem that is cyber secure and a number of enablers, I, I would say. But trust, uh, education, and always make sure that users have choices. That's something that I'm concerned about. That the only choice is not whether you join a service application or, or social network, or you are left out, that you hopefully will see in the future more business models where the users can opt in or opt out uh, whether to pay for a given service or application rather than, than donate, if you will, their, their data or their consumption patterns. Anyway, um, so that's that's on on the one hand, uh, but on the other, cities have to make sure that that they are managing their public resources efficiently, and that public goods and public spaces remain as such. That by making a city smart, we do not exclude citizens from access to to services. To, to public spaces by somehow privatizing. Uh, and, and when there's a city with challenges in, in the knowledge to use um, digital solutions, there, there tends to be a, a greater digital divide that we have to make sure we, we avoid. Also, I think it is important, especially in Mexico, uh, when we think of all the things that will be needed to make this true, uh, from infrastructure and sensors and apps and everything, that we develop knowledge in Mexico. That we are not only consumer of technology and software from abroad, but that we are producers of whether, whatever, whether it's a content, a software a design of a, or, or manufacture of sensors, that we now for this, and finally, for, that, that we start uh, becoming part of the technology providers, and not only the, the buyers of technology. I think that's important. And um, just wanting to, not to uh, forget, because Mexico has made a commitment internationally, as many of the countries have come from, for sustainable development goals towards 2030. And that means goals of uh, fighting poverty and procuring accessibility for disabled people and, and gender equality and a number of very important goals, all of which should be uh, taken into consideration when designing and implementing 
a, a smart city, that it is an enabler of human rights, of development, and of more equality, which is one of the most needed um, goals in that country. That there are now citizens that have access to everything and the others that remain without access. It's not only access to an application or so, it's access to water, to health services, to education, to, to employment or you know, livelihood. And, and so uh, I think a, a, a well-designed um, smart city can be an enabler of these of human rights and sustainable development goals that, that we make sure we achieve. And just to end, uh, we, I worked in a workshop uh, about six months ago with the city of Mexico, and the, the largest city and most poetic city, but wonderful city in the world. And the government of the, the city of Mexico is, is working on a smart city plan. And what they they put us together for three days working on a, a, an exercise of uh, the perspectiva, you know? how to build the future, not to predict the future, but to build it in the context of smart city. And, and we uh, identified, and with a large group over 32 different backgrounds, uh, uh, a matrix where we identified what would be like the first enablers or, or um, you know, input that we needed to make sure that we could get a smart city, both infrastructure wise and, and you know, capital and spectrum and, and standards and etc. And that's what I sent to you and which, which of those variables are more and more important or at least have a higher priority in time. And so that we have to make sure we have them in place to before we start thinking of, of building a smart city. I do uh, expect to, one of the things for me is really uh, interesting, and I really don't, I'm sure I'll get an answer from you all, is whether this is a project, and I know there's a lot of experience in, in projects like this, whether top to bottom or above or bottom up or, or both no? because, because it involves a city government but the solutions are ecosystems and I think are multi stakeholders but who comes first I mean, if we take a strategy of planning by central you know and it just starts popping you know with 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 the machine to machine new developments with new uh, devices as we are starting to see in the market so I don't know whether it just happens or it should be planned for and uh, developed integrally. Thank you very much. Thank you again. I think you already mentioned very, very relevant points on for, for this working group. I just took note of a few of them, but I think all of them are equally important. You mentioned cross, which that is a big challenge, really, really big challenge, because it's around that that uh, we can do it or we cannot do it. End of the day. Uh, you mentioned uh, inclusion, so inclusion of the users. Why we have this technology? If we, I mean, are we using this technology really to bring people to the services, to bring services to people, or are we using this technology as a way to even make the gap bigger? This is a very good question I think that we need to, to discuss in the, the, the users working group. Um, you mentioned uh, equal access that is related to this. Uh, and, and this fact that uh, not only Mexico being an adopter of technology, but actually become a technology provider is something also to, to really um, think about very carefully. But are the, if we manage to answer, I, I think, even at least one of these questions in, in the right way, to give advice on, on at least one of these topics, I think with the, with the work done by the group will be successful already, <laughs> because these are really very important and relevant problems. If this is something that we have to, to answer from a top-down, bottom-up approach, I think uh, if the project aim is to go both sides. The reason we have groups working more with industry, groups working more with users, so trying to, to find the right way in between, but uh, I think the challenges are very big. The time of the project 
duration is limited, but I think with the expertise of people sitting here, we can at least do a, a very good contribution towards the whole discussion, special for Mexico. So thanks. And we go on with the presentations. I think next one in the list of the people that are actually present today is, is Giuseppe. And, and I'm very interested in, in what Giuseppe will tell because he's coming from, I think, the, the bottom up approach, right? So this is exactly what, something that is really missing a lot, I think. Personally, it's only a personal opinion, but maybe that's kind of right. In, in the fiber community. So people talking uh, as in the media, from the companies that are involved, how they see the future, how they see things happening, and, and the majors getting on to, to support the, the better design of smart cities for the future. So this is it. Yeah, uh, I'm a software engineer. I like write code all the time. And uh, I worked in many uh, companies in Italy and uh, Austria, Italy, and as a software engineer. And later in 2014, uh, after some work, after some research in a garage, uh, I found a company is called GPTEC with the other people. And we uh, are developing a technology that, that uh, is able to locate people and things inside buildings. So like the GPS, but uh, indoors. And we spent uh, the first year to develop this technology, but then we found uh, the problem that the, the market was not ready yet to adopt directly our solution. And so we started also to develop the vertical this, uh, this technology, and uh, instead of reinventing the wheel, we, we try to find other technologies that help us to uh, integrate our technology in the uh, ready to market product. That's how we came with actually with the uh, fewer technology. So we use the fewer lab and the other part of the fewer ecosystem to develop uh, some application. Uh, one, of, one of these applications is uh, an app for museum that is going uh, in uh, Trento to show to serve the of the museum. So we are now using technology to help us to prepare apps and My question now, an immediate question that I have for you is, is why you choose Fiverr and not other platforms that may be available for doing similar things? I think this is talking about the option, something that we need to think about. Why, why Fiverr and not other choices? Okay. Uh, first of all, because there are other uh, solutions, of course, that are in the market that are, that are very uh, competitive, but we wanted to, to use something that is open source and can be also uh, adapt, adapted to uh, other uh, kind of technologies. Uh, so to, in, to yeah. since we uh, generate location location data, we want also to uh, provide some way to use this data from other. Um, from, from other uh, software, uh, so from other so solutions, or, uh, uh, and, and then that's why we use uh, fewer only. An open source, and this is something very interesting. I think uh, the, the nice part of the working group is exactly this that we have people seeing the problem from a kind of a higher level, some people having the right answers, like, like you said, very pragmatic. So I just need because it's open source, others are closed. And this is a simple question that has very a lot of discussion behind. <laughs> so the open source initiatives towards the, the closed as, uh, systems, as we were mentioning at the beginning of the session, but while watching the videos of people want to use platforms that can actually really talk to other platforms to share data, uh, to, to be able to get data from other sources, use it, and send it back. So, this is a lot of input that I think we will be able to provide you in the, in the way of 
Thank you very much. Please. I have a question for you. You said um, you developed solutions uh, realizing afterwards or realizing at some point that the market was not friendly uh, for the kind of solution you developed. My question is um, how far were uh, helped to get closer to the market, if at all? I don't know if uh, using other kind of technology uh, at the same time to the market. But the, the problem for us was that uh, now a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, studies and papers uh, talk about indoor organizations, but at that time uh, uh, everybody was something that everybody wanted, but nobody wanted to be the first. So uh, we also uh, wanted to find a way to uh, not only uh, tell one piece of technology, but also have the possibility to be integrated with existing data. Well, for example, uh, in uh, my project, we use uh, one uh, the pure technology to collect position of the point of interest to, to use in our apps. So we, we uh, in this way, we could not, on, not only use a specific uh, database, but we can uh, use uh, Base that can be provided by a third party in uh, yeah not only that it's open source it's uh, something that is not a standard but uh, for us it's like uh, a standard. Answer the question. Point point on uh, from the interest of Simon and more directly to Christian. So we Christian you can. Uh, very briefly, I'm Christian Levin from Italy. I'm a lecturer at the University of Pedro. And uh, I have an impact that is uh, about people. So uh, it's not Richard's impact, <laughs> it's, it's not also uh, Rafael's impact. Uh, I start from the people because I work with the disabled people, I work with the elderly people, with people with dementia. And so, as uh, Giuseppe was saying, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we are developing some technologies that are not uh, maybe ready for the market or we are not co-create the technology with the people that are using the technology. I was traveling with people with disability all over the world and also working with the people with dementia. And the idea from that perspective is completely different. So if uh, we want to use some technology also from the inclusion point of view, I'm very agree with you, <laughs> that uh, when you think about the inclusion, uh, we have to think also about people that are just are old, just are uh, deaf, blind, uh, or have a disability, or a motor impairment, or whatever is out there. So if we are able to co-create with the people something, so involve the people also in the development, I think that the sustainability and the scalability of the technology that we want to put in the market will be there. Thank you. Okay. So, so this is the users working group. It's the first time we sit down together in the room. I'm very excited about the discussion that can come out after listening to all of you, really. And there is a lot of different things here going on and ideas. Um, I will uh, turn up to Miguel for he can introduce some people from the other working groups. And then later we will split, I think, for the last part of this uh, session. Just to, to, to discuss a little bit more of the very next things we are going to do. Very briefly, because uh, we have really long time, I would like to introduce just one member of each working groups, because we are starting to work with, with, with the research and education and just um, giving uh, also for the industry working group the, 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 the path to, to the input paper. So uh, let me introduce uh, uh, Juan Carlos Davis, just um, as the main representative of InfoTech, just to say some words about uh, yourself, uh, Juan Carlos, and then um, and um, what do you expect from the industry working group for power and InfoTech? Yes. Yeah. Uh, good morning. 
That occurred is pretty astonished because yeah, I've seen many persons is still astonished. Es muy importante para lograr la inclusión de la industria, alinear los incentivos que debe tener la industria a través de un mecanismo de colaboración, eh, un mecanismo de competencia colaborativa. Y eso se logra a que la colaboración logren obtener más beneficio del esfuerzo que ellos van a proporcionar de participar en un ecosistema como es el FAGO. Y dada la complejidad de lo que significa la generación de datos digitales y su costo de transacción de generarlos, la forma en que la empresa y la meta que tenemos de llegar a mil empresas emblemáticas es que ellos vean que tienen externalidades positivas que con sus diferentes productos de IoT puedan a través de esta eh, plataforma de información contextual obtener y generar más fácilmente información para que sus servicios ya de manera muy particular puedan ser eh, establecidos de manera estable, porque el laboratorio de, de todo el desarrollo de pago que se encuentra en Incotec, si bien es uno de los más grandes que hay fuera de Europa y como unidad es uno de los más grandes también, es importante darle estabilidad a estas aplicaciones. De manera de prueba está muy bien que estemos trabajando, pero ya cuando se tiene que trabajar con una ciudad y una ciudad depende de que la información sea oportuna para la toma de decisiones, ahí es cuando debemos hacer problemas. Entonces, esta sinergia, también el costo eh, de la curva de aprendizaje va a ser más amigable. El desarrollo de aplicaciones generales para poder hacer las aplicaciones particulares es fundamental. Entonces yo creo que eh, la industria se va a dar cuenta que este es un mecanismo de que puede llegar a aportar, pero va a obtener más de esa aportación y puede profundizar porque las metas son muy ambiciosas. En términos generales sería mi primera reflexión. Muchas gracias. And I, um, and finally, I would like to introduce, um, to introduce you, uh, maybe in finance, to, to give some words concerning the research and education group. It will be also <laughs> just a few words. And um, this. Thank you very much, uh, uh, I've expressed myself in the Spanish work of the course. I think that we are in Mexico, and after all, we could explain the uh, Muchas gracias, Miguel. Uh, bueno, también tengo la oportunidad de colaborar con el contexto que soy estudiante de, de centro de investigación. Y bueno, solamente también como CUDI y el área de salud, nosotros vemos una oportunidad en hardware. Y, eh, y también un interés en el grupo de, 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 de usuarios finales. Eh, yo colaboro con la Escuela Superior de Medicina del Politécnico Nacional, que es una, la segunda más importante de México. Y lo que estamos eh, trabajando es justo cómo los estudiantes de medicina y los recién egresados de medicina pueden retroalimentar las necesidades que ven en campo y pueden ser co-creadores de, de algunas propuestas. Eh, hemos trabajado con un pequeño grupo de estudiantes que ya han propuesto sus propias aplicaciones pequeñas eh, y donde vemos la oportunidad que eh, plataformas como hardware sirvan para la prueba y también para visualizar eh, el futuro cómo pueden ser escalados. Eh, también bueno, sería breve y espero que podamos establecer una colaboración. Muchas gracias. Um, 
uh, I think it's time uh, to split the rules uh, for the concerning user groups in the state here in the room. Uh, concerning the industry and research and education uh, members of the groups, we'll, we will uh, be working on the other group. And then we will start uh, uh, open the open hand and uh, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so, so we have to see a few minutes I think we have it's time to split the So we get back. And five minutes just to split the rules now and we can get closer to the work and the users working with so we can start the discussion. Okay, let's start. Yes. First, I just want to introduce Yolanda Rosa, is the project coordinator for FIRE. <laughs> Thank you. 